give us a sense, Ross. Obviously, we're seeing a big rally in the market. It's a bull market pretty much across the board in recent days. How important is PCE to that rally continuing and us possibly having a Santa Claus rally that would start a week after tomorrow? I think it's really important. I mean, this whole rally is predicated on the Fed easing next year more than the market had expected and the soft landing basically being on, right? You've had this risk on rally and everything rally, and it's predicated on a soft landing. So you basically need every data point to confirm that. Otherwise, I think the risk skews to the downside. So I, I don't see any big you know, downside risk from the PCE number, but it's not just PCE. It's every economic data point in January and February have to continue to confirm that this soft landing is on. And the Fed has to come out and continue to confirm what the market you know, took away from their Wednesday meeting, which is they're going to ease next year more than expected and possibly earlier than expected because inflation has come down so rapidly. I want to talk to you about bond yields right now. We've been talking about their pretty steady decline, especially after the Fed decision. Um, before, bonds were given a lot of competition to equities. Now it doesn't seem like that's as much of a case. A lot of people saying the term risk on, which means people are more willing to invest in riskier assets. Are there any areas that are, quote unquote, riskier that you see benefiting the most? Yeah, look, I think if the soft landing is the base case, it's the economically sensitive areas, the more cyclical stocks, the more value tilted stocks that have been a little beaten up in 2023. Um, that could take the baton of leadership in 2024. I think those would be more classically risky. They're a little more volatile with the business cycle. Um, but if we're seeing this uptick in business activity, if we're seeing the Fed easing rates and the soft landing kind of being on, then I think those areas would be the ones to take the baton in 2024. You're looking at things like financials, um, industrials, potentially things like materials and energy, again, more classically sensitive to the economy. But if the economy is going to rally or continue the rally in 2024, then we'd expect those stocks outperform. All right, let's talk about uh, the rally continuing. So we're going to talk about the Magnificent Seven later in the show. I want to talk to you about the S&P 493. I know you're looking at the S&P equal weighted index. That continues to outperform. What does that signal to you as someone who advises investors and advises clients? Yeah, look, we never bought in fully to the idea that a, a narrow market rally was some harbinger of doom or risk this year. You know, it's it's just kind of the nature of the beast and the, the cap weighted S&P 500. But all things equal, we would like to see a broader, more participation in the rally. And so the other 493 or the equal weight S&P, the representation of that average stock starting to rally, starting to outperform in November, it is really confirmation that this, this cyclical rally has some legs to it, right? It's broadening out to beaten down sectors, um, to those, those value and cyclically, cyclical sectors. And so to get that participation as a really you know, good sign heading into a new year, that broadening of a rally is, is healthier, all things considered. So you're talking about a rotation in the cyclicals. Is there one area of cyclicals in particular that you think benefits? Is it materials? Is it industrials? I mean, what benefits in 2024 after this huge tech rally in 2023? I think all things equal, I, I like industrials the best of that group. Um, they have the, the everything we've just been talking about, right? A potential for a cyclical rally. They're a diverse sector. They also have some structural tailwinds in the form of big fiscal spending, whether it's the infrastructure bill um, or the IRA. So there's, uh, and then there's aerospace and defense, of course, as part of that sector, which has some tailwinds as well. So there's a lot to like in industrials. They've been um, pretty firm this year. They haven't really been one of the beaten up sectors. They haven't, you know, been up there with AI, but they've, they've held in. I think industrials have the potential to actually outperform next year and, and provide some other reasons for optimism outside of just your hope for a, a cyclical rally um, with the soft landing. 